Hey, I'm glad you decided to join us for the second part. So this is uh, the same spreadsheet. Uh, I've kind of put my uh, outline of what I want to do to improve it. This kind of dashboard up here where we can choose the number of iterations. Uh, it's going to go through and we're going to have it uh, use a counter as it builds up its iterations, uh, calculate the mean, the standard deviation. And then we can look at some statistical analysis of uh, what's going on in, in our project and what's the likelihood that we're going to be complete by a given time. All we need to do in this case is we're going to build up, rather than use the what if uh, function within Excel, is I'm going to use a little bit of Visual Basic just to manage my data and build up my own data table. The random number function, because it regenerates every time we do something with the spreadsheet, it's going to take care of all the math and the mathematics and everything else. So. What we're going to do is we're basically, if we look at this line here from our pass through the project, all the different path uh, durations and the project uh, duration, we're going to copy this. And on a second tab, I've got one called SIM here, and I've just put in some headings so we know what they are, is we're going to copy it to the line and then go down a line, copy it again, copy it again. Of course, it's changing and updating every time we copy it because that's the nature of the random number function. So all we're using our Visual Basic for is to basically set this up and to copy it down. So I'm going to do a couple other things. I'm going to use it to clear the old sheet in case you've got an old uh, um, a simulation that you've run. So I want to clear it out uh, so they don't conflict. Uh, and otherwise set up the domain so that we can get our statistics working. So we go back here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my developer sheet. So I've already got the developer tab open and we're going to use the visual basic button. Okay. There we go. It's popped up off site. So I'll just bring it in. And what I've done is I've set it up. Uh, I just basically recorded an empty macro uh, so that I have it uh, set up so that I can assign it to a, a simulation or use a shortcut code uh, to run it. And so I'm just going to build my uh, my coding in here. And so we're going to start and we're going to say uh, our worksheets and we're going to be dealing with our sim worksheet and the range that I want goes from A3 to, and I'm going to assume we're not going to build anything larger than 10,000 iterations. So just a minute, uh, 10,003, because we have a couple above us at the top, and I'm going to clear it. So that'll take care of any old data that's there, and it's going to get rid of it. Now, I'm going to add comments in later, of course, uh, but let's get this written down here, and we're going to go iterations. And again, we're going to be dealing, in this case, with our summary worksheet. And specifically dealing with cells 4, 14. Cells 4, 14. So you're probably asking yourself, what is cell 4, 14? So if we go up here, 4, obviously row 4, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 over. And so that's where we have that field for number of iterations. Uh, where's my visual basic module? Bring it back to the front so we can see it. And so we're selecting that and we're making the variable iterations equal to the number of iterations that we want to consider in our analysis. And now what I need to do is basically set up a loop to copy uh, the summary uh, path durations uh, for each iteration. So i is equal to 1, 2 iterations. And to do that, we're going to go this workbook uh, sheets and we're dealing with our summary to start with and we're going to choose the cells that we want to copy over and in this case they are cells from five fourteen value equals i. What this is doing is it's basically 
one down from where we were, so not 4, 4 14 anymore, but 5, 14, it's going to copy the value of i, so where are we in our iterations, and it's going to copy it in there. So we're going to see a running counter as we're going along. These are just some of the, 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 the eye candy that we're going to build into this so that we can demonstrate this uh, method and how it's going to uh, uh, take care of our uh, convergence bias. Using the same functions all the way along, in this case, we're going to our sim table where our summary table is going to be. Uh, and we're going to choose our cells two or the headers and add to that the number of iterations that we're on and choose the first column. And we're going to resize. So this is how big of a, a range are we choosing? And oh, we got an extra and value is equal to i. Actually, it should it should just be one. And again. We're just going to now copy in those fields. So from cells two plus i two wide resize. This is where we choose the full range eight, and we set it equal to the summary from our first summary sheet, if you will. Sheets, summary dot cells. And so twenty six two resize brackets, comma eight highlights or selects. Uh, the the uh, row of uh, path durations and the project duration. Okay, well, and then if we increment, that will repeat itself for all of our iterations from I to iterations. And now all we need to do is clean things up for our exit. And so we're going to dimension temporary range as range set our temporary range equal to worksheets sim dot cells three nine so that's choosing the top row and we're going to resize this one in this case for all of our iterations and one and this workbook dot names, and we're going to add the name for our domain equal to durations and refers to temp range. Now, we should uh, certainly add some comments in here, clean it all up, make it all uh, pretty the way uh, it should look. So let me quickly do that before we go out and test it. Okay, so we've got it all done. We put, put in all of our uh, comments so that we can remember what we're doing. And so now we should be able to just test that. So if we go back to our sheet, what I you can do, I put in a button here uh, and you can assign a macro to it so that it runs. I've assigned the macro uh, that we've got. And so if I press this, we should run through our simulation. And so you see the counter running up and you saw a bunch of numbers changing. So if I go to the sim now, of course, it has built our simulation table for the number of iterations that we planned. 
So let's keep uh, working on this. Let's make it a little bit better. We're obviously having some fun. Uh, I don't know if you noticed when we ran the simulation, now you're actually seeing as it's going through how the critical path is not always path three, normally path three, sometimes path two, and then very rarely it actually comes out as path one. So we're seeing that convergence bias uh, being accommodated. So now, because remember we, in our macro, we assigned the name uh, domain uh, durations, uh, we can actually use that just to get some statistics. So we can come up with our average of uh, durations that should go in there. We can format it down so that we have, oh, other way. And set our standard deviation. Uh, and again, durations. Uh, something reasonable. And we can also figure out what the minimum and the maximum are from our durations. So we can say equals min durations, and that'll tell you the shortest project duration we had in our set. And we can also get our maximum. And that will get us our maximum durations for our set. And uh, now we're starting to get real information. Let's uh, just pretty this up just a little bit more. Uh, what I want to do is say, okay, the probability be completed before 50 days. And I want to have Excel tell me what that probability is or probability. And then of course we can change these numbers to whatever it is that we want. And to do that, we're going to use our normal distribution function. So norm, instead of inverse this time, we're using distribution, so we're going the other direction. And in this case, we're choosing this number as our input, and we're comparing that to our mean. And I'll use function f4 so it doesn't move around. And our standard deviation. Again, function f4. So keep them absolute. And add a true. Oh, what did we do wrong here? <laughs> well, it helps if I spell it right. There we go. And then because of the way we set that up, we should just be able to copy that down. And so we have a couple different things that we can play with. If we want to know, say 51 weeks, it's 19% likely to be completed before 51 weeks. We'll go say 56 weeks. We're looking at almost 100% certainty that it'll be completed. And so we're starting to get some really great information. The other thing I want to do is I just want to add a histogram uh, that uh, shows you the uh, distribution of the project durations through the Monte Carlo simulation. So let me just go get that. And I'm just going to plop it in here. Uh, Okay, so I've just used the histogram function. I've put it in there. I've adjusted my baskets a little bit so that I get a meaningful thing. And of course, this is always a great visual check to see how, you know, have we done a reasonable number of iterations to get a good answer. So we've been using a thousand up until now. We can change it to say 500 and run it. Again, you're seeing it run the simulation. Uh, so I'm not uh, not exactly sure why the histogram is waiting for some other change or calculation to uh, update itself, but um, I'll have to think about that. So here you go. You've got a fairly strong setup. You can certainly demonstrate uh, what's going on and you can have a, a more rigorous control. So now we see probability of being completed before 51 days. We want to change that between 52 56 days is 99, so it gives you a lot of good information. So we can go ahead and mitigate uh, various tasks and uh, update the information associated with that and run our simulation again in fairly short order. So hopefully uh, those enhancements are of value to you and you can apply them to so many different cases. I've got one similar, like this, similar to this where I'm looking at project costs where project costs are a function of time. So we're looking at random variables in time as well as cost. And uh, it works really, really well. So uh, hopefully that's useful to you. 
and uh, we'll see you back here again when we have something new.